What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new, my name is Christian. I am a high school basketball player who's highly recruited by a lot of Division One schools. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining what it's like playing on the Adidas Gauntlet. I was able to play on the Gauntlet with YGC36, which is NBA player, Marcus Smart's Adidas Gold Gauntlet team. So I'm going to be breaking down the trial process and how you can be picked to be on an Adidas Gauntlet team, what the practices were like, what it's like traveling and playing on the circuit, and which I've been asking for the most, what the gear is like. Before we start this video, make sure you guys subscribe and follow me on the gram at Christian Weddington. Also, shout out to all you guys who watch the videos from overseas. Really appreciate all you guys' support. So, the Adidas Gauntlet has two circuits. They have the Gold Circuit and the Silver Circuit. So, the Gold and Silver Circuit are very similar. Gold Gauntlet teams are under contract, which means that their gear and travel for tournaments are paid for. The Gold teams play in bigger events where they have a lot more exposure with college coaches and people do rankings like ESPN, 247, all that stuff. And they play in a lot of big tournaments there like Dallas, California, Alabama, Indiana, and Spartanburg, South Carolina. The Silver Circuit teams are not under contract, so their gear and travel for tournaments is not paid for by Adidas. But they do play in big tournaments, they're just in different cities and where the gold tournaments are. But if a silver team actually has a really good record, they can get moved up from being silver to a gold gauntlet team. So if you guys watched my previous video where I talked about what the trial process was like playing YBL, the Diaz gauntlet process is completely different. When I played YBL, we had like two giant workouts for like, like 200 plus kids just trying out for 15 u and when I played in the gauntlet, how it worked was we had one giant tryout with all age groups, 15U, 16U, and 17U, where we basically did what is similar to what the NBA Draft Combine does, where we did a lot of combine testing. So they tested our athleticism and our quickness with a lot of crazy drills. So the first thing we did was the three force court sprint, where you start the baseline and sprint almost to the other side of the court. This drill is basically used to see how fast players can sprint up the court. So the second combine drill we did was the vertical jump test where we do two tests, one standing, one running. So for the first one, they test your vertical off without any step or run, just straight up you jump and how to slap the pins. So for the second vertical test, you actually get to get a, a little bit of a running start instead of just standing straight up and jumping. You get to run from outside the three point line and see how high your vertical is based upon where you slap on the pins. Those ones I always love just because I have a very high vertical, so it kind of shows like how athletic I am in comparison to everybody else when we do the vertical test. Fun facts, when I went to the John Lucas Elite Invitational back when I was a freshman, where they had some of the best sophomore, juniors, and seniors in the country at the time, I had the highest vertical test out of all the people there. I hadn't did any training on Vertimax, like it was all natural. I didn't really did any type of training yet for my vertical. So the third combine test drill really they do is the Lane agility test where basically they just see how fast you can move like laterally. This one for me is honestly like one of the easiest ones to do if you have good shoes. If you have really bad shoes and you're fast, like you're just set up for failure. How it works is you start under the basket, you sprint to the free throw line, slide across the free throw line, slot, then sprint down, touch the baseline, come back, sprint, back up to the free throw line, slide across, and then touch the baseline again. The way I'm describing it probably sounds really confusing, but it's really simple whenever you see it done. This test honestly is probably one of like the easiest ones to cheat because a lot of players, you're supposed to slide when you hit the free throw line across, but a lot of guys just like basically sprint across, but it looks like a slide. That's what I always do, but they never say anything about it. So for the final combine test that we did was the lane and lane agility test where we start in the middle of the key, sprint to the left, then back to the right, then back to the left. It's really simple. I drill kills if you don't have good grip. If you have really bad grip in your shoes, you're destined for failure. So it took us about two hours to get through that whole process of doing all the combine drills. We only had one big gym for that tryout and we had people trying out for 15U, 16U, and 17U. So there was about 100 to 100 kids per team trying out. So it was a lot of kids doing combine testing. Once we got done with the combine testing, we did a little bit of five on five where we did like five on five on five where you start on offense, one team goes on offense. If they get a stop, they get to go down to the opposite side of the court and be on offense. And this is like a whole continuous thing. I did really get in that tryout. And from that tryout, I got picked to play on the Adidas Gold Gauntlet team with YGC36. So if you guys have been, if you guys follow me, you guys saw my other video I did where I talked about what it's like playing YBL. And basically during my freshman year, I tried out for Pro Skills, which is the YBL team and YGC36. I previously had played in middle school with Nike Pro Skills, so I kind of had a stronger tie with them because I knew a lot of the coaches from Pro Skills. I ended up deciding from going to both trials that I was going to play YBL. But later on towards May of my freshman year, it just wasn't really working out Pro Skills. We had didn't really do that well in our first session at YBL. And then our second session, I did really well in, but I only was able to play one game because I got really, really sick, which honestly sucked because I played my best game in YBL 
he got sick the next day and like wasn't able to play for the rest of the session. But I actually ended up making the decision after playing that last tournament with pro skills that I was gonna go play with YDC 36. Because when you play UIBL, if you don't make Peace Jam, your summer's over in May. And for me, I wanted to be able to play the whole summer and be able to become a better Bowser player and continue to develop my game. So I ended up leaving pro skills and ended up joining YG, YGC 36 and playing on the gauntlet. Okay, so for most of these gauntlet teams, they do practice. The team that I played for with YGC 36, we actually did not practice at all. We had one practice the entire spring and summer, just because we had a lot of players who lived very far out of where our team was based out of. My team was based out of Dallas, Texas. We had players who lived in Austin, Waco, Houston, and so forth. So it was really challenging trying to get players just to like drive down so we could have practice. So what my team ended up doing was we did a lot of showcases and small tournaments in preparation for the big tournaments where we played like in the gauntlet and in front of a lot of college coaches. It made the most sense just to play and build chemistry through playing tournaments and trying to have us all get into one centralized location and practice. And we had the best chemistry without practicing. Like we just had a bunch of dudes who were just hoopers who just go out there and get you a bucket. I would argue we had like maybe one or two sets, but really and truly we just went out there and hooped. I've heard stories from some of my friends who played on the circuit where they literally met their teammates for the first time before they played like in the first session UIBL and on the gauntlet. So for the Adidas Gauntlet, how it works is they start their whole like circuit off in April with their first tournament, which is an NC live period event. So all the college coaches that are division one can come watch us play and sit on the baseline. That tournament's always lit because every single like Adidas sponsor team plays in it. Adidas has a lot of regional qualified tournaments. So most of the time you don't see every single sponsor Adidas team playing in like the Gauntlet series tournaments because there's so many of them. When you play Adidas, all teams actually qualify for like their end of the summer season tournament event called the Summer Championship. So if you're an Adidas like Gold Gong team, it doesn't matter like how bad your record is, you automatically qualify for the Summer Championships. But if you want to play in the Gauntlet Finale, which is like their last so-called like summer tournament, you have to win one of their original qualifiers. When I was playing Adidas, we actually didn't even go to the Summer Championships just because we qualified for the Gauntlet Finale, which is a bigger tournament than playing in like the Summer Championships. When you're a 15 year team, it's a lot harder for you to get like a lot of college coaches to come watch you play unless you're playing like in the main gym where all like the other 17 U and 16 teams are playing. So what my team did was we played in a tournament in Dallas called Gasso during the weekend of the summer championships. We played 17 U and Gasso where we played against a bunch of UA, EYBL teams that didn't make Peace Jam or the UA finals. So for us, it was a much better decision for us because we were able to play in front of a lot of college coaches rather than going to Birmingham, Alabama to play in a big tournament but not really have a chance of getting as much exposure. So I enjoyed playing in the golf finale the most out of all the tournaments on the Adidas circuit just because you're playing against some of the best players in the country and you're playing against the best of the best when it comes to like Adidas teams. So you're playing against teams like Compton Magic, Dream Visions, Ebo, which is the team that Jalen Green played for, Atlanta Celtics, Game Elite. Like you're playing against all the best like Adidas teams. So when I played in the Gala Finale, we played against Dream Visions, Team Wall, which is like John Wall's Adidas team. And then this one team from Alabama that had, had one dude, I think his name's like CJ. He's like committed to Indiana, I believe. But uh, we played against some of the best players of the country in that tournament. We got a lot of the exposure. The whole point of playing on the circuit is to play against the best players so you can get the most exposure possible. And for that reason, that's why I, I think that was one of the best tournaments that I played in by far. So I know this is the part of the video that you guys have been waiting for the most, which is the gear. Everybody always talks about like how nice the gear is when you play UIBO, playing the circuit. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when you play 15U or 16U on the circuit, unless you play on like a big, like really big name team, they don't really give you a lot of gear. Like this is pretty much one of the only shirts we got, which is like the generic shirt that everybody gets who plays in the circuit. We got two pairs of shoes. I have really big feet. I wear size 14 and a half. So my shoe selection was a lot harder. So when I was playing on the gauntlet, the shoe that everybody was getting was the Harden Volume Threes and the Dam Fives. I couldn't get any Dam Fives in my size, so the shoe that I ended up getting was the Adidas Crazy Explosive 2017s. I think I might have shown them to you guys once in one of the videos where I was working out. They're kind of old, but I have two pairs of them. This is my first pair. They're super like beat. Like they're, they still have a little bit of grip left in them, but I've worn them a lot. I actually had to add an extra lace sole because 
they like don't have a lot of ankle support they're not really tight enough around my ankle so i had to just add a little extra uh, tightness to the shoe i actually have two pairs of them this is like my newer pair that i wear a lot more frequently than this one this one's like pretty much like done for i don't think it really shows as much in the camera but these shoes are crazy these shoes are a little heavy but they're super nice i wish i could have gotten for the dames but i really tried on five pairs of dame fours and every single pair i tried on didn't fit like i tried on some of the hardens but they just really weren't like the best fitting shoe for me so this is our jersey what you guys can see like the these uprising gauntlet logo thing on there so ygc stands for young game changer and then 36 is marcus smart's number funny story i started off like the whole like season playing ybo before i joined ygc and they thought that i wore number 23 from the film i gave them when i was playing with pro skills but i really wore 34 so the only jersey they had in 23 was an xl so they ended up giving me an xl jersey and i wore like a medium so let me just look at the photos I was swimming in that jersey. Like I would roll the shorts like three or four times at every little dead ball or timeout and, and the shorts would literally still be at my knees. It was so bad. So here is the home jersey. You can see like the, I don't know if this can focus, like the VS Uprising, all that stuff on there. So these were like the jerseys for 17, like I want to say three years ago. And then we got these as like a hand-me-down jersey because 17 got new jerseys. and. They were so big like they already like fitted like they were like a size bigger and on to add on to that i got an xl so like i was just swimming in that jersey i would always get roasted like whenever uh we would like take photos and stuff and they would always be like bro like who gave you those double xl shorts that double x jersey like you who been in 2006 like i don't really miss <laughs> having to like roll my shorts like five times every game and then still have the shorts be at my knees like it was it was not a good era so like to be honest, like the gear, I'm not gonna put anything like, oh, like, I'm happy that I got like the shirt, the jerseys and some like the shoes. But when we played Nike, like we got so much more stuff. Like we got lots of hoodies. Like here's just one, like here's one of the hoodies I got. Then it's like this one has the Respect the Legacy logo on the back. Another one, it's like a different color, Respect the Legacy. You want to be logo on the back. Like we got so much more stuff. Like we even got like team shirts that said like that had you want to be logo on there. I couldn't even get a shirt. I played Adidas that had my team's like name on there. Like, we had shirts like this. RP to the shirt because I haven't worn it in, like two, three years. But like, you know, it says your team name, you want to be logo on it. Like it's so much crazy. It's so crazy that like we were sponsored, but we really didn't get a lot of stuff. But it was so honored to be able to play on the circuit and be able to play against some of the best players of the country and get exposure. But when it comes to the gear, the gear is really dry. It's really dry. <laughs> so you guys want me to like show you guys some more of the stuff I got from Nike, cause I have so many, so much more stuff. Like I'll just show you one of the shoes that I've been wearing a lot recently. Like these, like, oh, I the camera focus. If you guys want me to do a video, just showing you guys all the gear I got from playing YBL, Comment down below and get this video to like 500 likes and I'll do a video on it. I have a lot of stuff. Probably gonna start giving myself some of stuff away just because I really don't have any to wear it. Like I'm gonna go to college in less than a year and a half from now. And I don't really wanna be rocking the gear like I'm still in high school and it's college. So if you guys want some of the gear, comment down below. A lot of my stuff's like size large and XLs. But thanks you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and follow me on the guy Matt Christian Whittington. I have a lot more videos on the way. A lot more AE vlogs. I've been saying I'm gonna do it for a while now, but I actually have someone who can help me film. So expect some AE vlogs to be dropping soon. I'm also gonna be showing you guys some more workouts that I've been doing by myself and with some trainers so I can so you guys can see how I'm preparing for the NCAA live period events that are gonna be coming in the next couple of weeks where I'll finally get to play in front of college coaches, which has not been allowed since July 2019 when I was playing on the gauntlet. So if you guys want to see those videos, make sure you guys subscribe so you guys can get notified when I upload those videos. But it's your boy Christian signing out.